Yeah, welcome to the world of vintage guitars. And today we have a very special guest, Andre Tolba. Here at number one music, uh, guitar center, Hamburg. Okay, guitar center. It's specialized in guitars. Um, Looks like it's specialized in yeah. guitars. <laughs> <clears throat> and we have the specialist on Gretsch guitars. Everybody knows that I love vintage guitars. I'm mainly known for being a Strat player. Lately, I, I have been seen with more or less Pauls on top of the Strat. What but happened? What happened? No. What happened? Well, <laughs> I love them too. But the secret about this Gretsch guitar is never been so close to me. So you first are a professional player, um, being around for ages, for decades, playing rockabilly music. Right. And what is the band called? Because your real name and the band name and the project name, what's the story? They differ, right. Well, the band is called the Adriano Batolba Trio because like back uh, in 2003, I had the idea to start a rockabilly band with yeah. the uh, with Sasha, the yeah. famous German S singer, pop for, singer. Yeah, for the guys here in Germany, Sasha had mega hits. Um, we are talking about everybody knows Sasha because he was a very good looking guy with a very good looking <laughs> voice, a uh, good sounding voice. I don't think he would like to hear you say he was a very good. <laughs> but, well, uh, he is maybe. I haven't seen him, <laughs> so I can't tell. Maybe you can tell. Me. Is, well, is he still good looking? Well, well, yeah. yeah. I, the girls liked it, and he he had huge success. So yeah, Sasha, right. Sasha was so. Big. And I played in his band, and then at yeah. one time we were in the states, touring the states, and we went to yeah. uh, to Memphis on a day off, and we did the whole tour, Graceland Sand Studios, and everything. So th going to the states, Memphis, Tennessee, was this invitation of that band over there or was this no actually it was back in the day um sasha had a deal in germany with the warner brothers warner brothers and record their, company. their branch in in the states was reprise records which was yeah. founded by uh, frank sinatra yeah and um their idea was to to let the people know that the guy really could sing so uh -huh. that that it wasn't a pop polished production yeah, yeah, yeah. so they sent him over with me on guitar and we toured from Seattle to Miami, from New York to LA, like we were five weeks. Different. And nobody could tell, tell that you are German, not even by the accent. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, no, I'm joking. Well, but it's okay, this, I understand. So and we did we did radio shows yeah. mostly, yeah. Of the, most of the time. And yeah. then we had some few gigs, we opened for uh, Art Garfunkel. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, and, and in Seattle, for example, there was the, the guy who was uh, in charge of Hendrix back in the day, so he had a lot of stories to tell. Cool. Um, and uh, so we did that and on, on a day off, as I said, we went to uh, to Graceland and we had the idea because I come from a rock and roll background and knew the stuff. And ever, whenever we were on a jam session, like in, at three in the morning, we would end up playing an Elvis tune or whatever. So we said, we got to start a band sometime. So yeah. I put the band together eventually. And the band, because our our road manager, he worked for Nick Cave in the Bad Seats. So okay. he had a poster of Nick Cave in, in the yeah. production office. So uh, we made it, we, we thought we got to have a, a name. And we thought the, the, the stupidest name we could come up with was then Dick Brave and the Backbeats, <laughs> which is more funny for not native because, uh, not native speakers, because they, uh, I mean, Dick is, uh, is, a dick. Is, is for Richard, but I mean, the Germans, they just, <laughs> you know they don't know that anyway so and and so talk, and, talking richie kotzen here <laughs> <laughs> and other guitar player names <laughs> right so uh, and and like at one point they're gonna oh you gotta have a different name as well so right. they said well you could you know what you because my father originally he's from egypt yeah that well you, you could be italian as well so from yeah. so andre tolba became adriano batolba very Italian, yeah. So okay. and um, I used that name, and when I produced the record, and the record became a hit, it it, it said, produced by Adriano Batolba, mm. and then I went on to produce another record for a different record company, mm. and I wanted to put on it like produced by Andre Tolba, and they said, no, 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 we want the people to know that's the same team that did the Dick Brave record. So right. that you name with the name became yeah. became a life of itself, and yeah. that, that's why I use the name still, and the band is that. It's called the Adriano Batolba Trio. Of course, yeah, ma makes sense. Do don't don't change your, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, running system or I mean your brand name uh, in the end. Right, you know, that's right. that's uh, that's totally cool. So when when it comes to Gretsch guitars, I mean we have, I don't know how many, six seven guitars here. Yes. Um, 
what is the the general story about these guitars i mean gretsch was big big in the 50s even maybe you know fender started kind of later or i mean they, they were around back then but um was gretsch before fender do you know i i think they started making banjos in the 40s so See? so they were like before. I mean, not not. I mean, talking guitars. I'm not sure, but but yeah. they, string instruments. I think yes, yeah. they started before and, that. And and the, I just know that, you know, the big companies like Gibson and Fender copied a lot of stuff that Gretsch had put out, mm -hmm. and uh, so back in the days, the Gretsch guitars were kind of very innovative. You know, for 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 us now, it's 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 kind of a little bit dated, dated not in nostalgia mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, which is cool too. I mean, the world of vintage guitars, this is what the channel is called. And right. we love it because of the tone and, and the stories and, and the whole thing that comes with old guitars. And um, so what we see here is hollow body guitars, um, then their special pickups. Um, I'm not going into the details, but we have the, the Bixby is, is the tremolo scene with Gretsch guitars. I mean, right. me as a Strat player, I know there's a Fender tremolo, which is with the synchronized blah, blah, blah. Leo Fender tried to be the super clever guy for next level. But this is where it came from. Well, I love that because it's as simple as it gets. I mean, yeah. you know, you just put the string around it and you have, yeah. the, you have the spring and you bend it down. And, and that's you know, all it takes. And basically it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I found out Strat always uh, uh, also works if you know how to set them properly. Most people don't. I have so many strats in my hand, so I know I can look at the, the, the six screws and I can already see it's not working or is it right. working. So there's a few tricks that I can tell you in another episode. But anyway. You can tell me once the camera's on. <laughs> so is there anything when it comes to the tremolo that needs maintenance? Do you put some oil in this uh, or is it all forget it, <laughs> well, set, set and forget? To be honest, I mean, with my guitars, you, you just, just play them. You just play them, really. Yeah. I mean, and if something breaks, which rarely ever happens, yeah. then you fix it. But I, it's not that, yeah. that I put oil or graphite yeah. or whatever on them and, you know, you just. Okay. Doesn't really need a lot of maintenance. So, so what I learned from you is. Um, this is the, the, the switch which switches between the, the bridge pickup, the neck pickup and the in-between. And this is kind of a tone switch. Right. In the middle is open, it's like no tone. And then there's a dark, uh, no, this is the super dark sound and this is the half dark sound. Okay, and there's your volume controls for the separate pickups and the master right. volume. So. Is there any favorite pickup combination that you is your favorite? Is it like bridge neck or in between, or you use them all? Well, I use them all really. I mean, it depends on what you play. Yeah. Like if you're playing like more like an Eddie Cochran riff, like where yes, there's the summertime blues riff, and you, oops. Okay. <laughs> then I then I would use the neck pickup yeah. for solos maybe. You know, then you want to have more treble, right? So, yeah. so, and uh, yeah, if you have something more like a Scotty Moore or Chet Atkins, something like that, then I would use both pickups, yeah. obviously, you know. Okay, always good to know, uh, yeah. But it's just, I mean, it's really, I mean, I always say to people, like, use your ears, I mean, what, of course. what, what, what suits you. Of course, but I mean, we talk about stuff, so hopefully some people get some inspiration right. Right. from the playing, from what they hear. Okay. I mean, this is always, you know, 
I talk a lot about stuff since I, we you know, myself, I have no problems because I got ears and when I have a vision, I try as long as it needs to get there, mm -hmm. you know, but some people, they need a bit more extra advice. So I'm, I'm, I learned to be not afraid to tell stuff, which I think is like obvious. And then for them, it's sometimes it's the missing link. It's like, right. man, I've, why didn't you tell me 20 years ago? <laughs> you know, but all, all, all good. I'm, I like this. So can you tell us a little bit about whatever, like, like this guitar or this guitar, where shall we start? Wherever you want. I mean, this guitar that you have, I think, is a 61. Because the, uh, the, the, the uh, I mean, built in 1961. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because the 6120, it became smaller ah. with with time. So this, the body is not as... The, Thick. The width, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is much... So maybe we can yeah. show it to the camera. Yeah. He's got the big boy and I'm the slim boy. Yeah. <laughs> So okay. that was, and that was a big change, I think, from after sixty in sixty one. Yeah, and um, they are all single cutaways. Is there any double cutaways? Doubles. They came, I think, in sixty one, sixty two. They started building okay. the double cutaways. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and they had like both versions running at the same time, or was um, there a period with only single? I don't know. I th it, well the the uh, before sixty one I think they only built uh, single cutaway guitars I see. okay and then in both it, and then yeah. both yeah. okay um. but there were also I mean like like you have the uh, Tennessee and uh, Tennessee Rose and, and and the other models and they have double cutaways like right this one there and on the wall yeah yeah. yeah. Okay, so any music connected to this guitar or to this guitar that you could inspire us with? <laughs> well, this is the 59. Yeah. I mean, this is the guitar that, uh, the, I mean, that, the, that, that year is the... The Holy Grail The Holy year. Grail, right. Because, is, I mean... Isn't Brian Setzer too? Or? Right, but Brian's guitar is a different story as well. I mean, he bought it in, in New York, in a, I think in a small shop somewhere in Massapeka, yeah. and it was in bits and pieces. So. Oh. And they put it back together. Mm -hmm. So, so for the purist, his the guitar that actually Gretsch now rebuilt, and you have like a top of the line exact copy of that guitar. I think it was it was like a, a neck from from there and there. But it's all fifty nine parts. So, but, and yeah. he has another one, a sixty, that Steve Miller gave to him. That mm -hmm. that are his two main guitars, okay. as far as I know. And, and Steve Miller is another Gretsch player. Yeah, I mean, I mean um, um, among other stuff, but he had one, and he's when yeah. he. I think it, the story is that when he saw Brian Setzer play, he said like, "I think you should have this guitar, <laughs> okay. something like that." So yeah. he, he yeah. gifted it to him. Yeah. Well, this is a thing, you know. Peter Green gave uh, Gary Moore a Les Paul right. because right. he thought, "Man, if you play that guitar, you get somewhere," right. and uh, it made some sense. Well, yeah. And the funny story yeah. is that I bought my my vintage Gretsch. I bought it in 1989 in. Uh, in London at Charing Cross Music and it was the same thing actually I mean they didn't tell me at the time they but, were cheating uh, a lot in in London Denmark Street I, I've I, been I think it was Charing Cross, Charing yeah, Cross Road yeah, yeah I know I've been to to vintage so-called vintage mm -hmm. shops in London as well always looking for strats or strat parts mm -hmm. and they I knew a little bit about that because you know my 61 strat that I bought I bought when I was 17 so when when I was in, in London in the in my late 20s in those kind of guitar porn uh, vintage <laughs> shops they told me oh this is original 62 whatever blah 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 and I already could tell that is a fake mm. but I could tell that the pickups were like 57s or something super right. special so I was trying to, to get a cool deal and in the end <laughs> they 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 kind of they thought they screwed me yeah. but I screwed you them too. Over. So right. in the end the deal was good. Yeah. You know. Anyway. Well, the same. I actually was kind of a little bit like that for me. I mean, I was 16 when I went there and yeah. I I wanted to have a Gretsch and back then, Gretsch was out of business. Yeah. Or just getting yeah. back into the yeah. business again. Mm. And uh, I I saw this 21 uh, 61 20 20. and. Uh, I wanted to have it and usually they were out of my uh, league and that one yeah. was like 750 English pounds which was still a lot, a lot of, of money, money back, back in the then. day and for but for for but for like, but yeah. for Gretsch was it was okay and yeah. 
It had a diff it, it had an, uh, a six, uh, 65 neck on it, which I didn't know at the time because I just saw the guitar and it was orange, yeah. and that was I'm, all, I, your... <laughs> all I needed. Right? Yeah. So and so later on, I found out that it, that it wasn't the original neck and everything. But you know, if it sounds good, if it plays great, well, well, the neck <clears throat> basically at, after some years, like actually, I. I had an accident with the guitar here in Hamburg mm. in the Große Freiheit. I, I bumped into the bass player. On so, stage? Like, so, yeah, yeah. So, um, mm. so at one point I couldn't use the guitar anymore because mm. it wasn't, you know, it didn't tune anymore properly. Mm. And uh, so I had to get another neck and I couldn't get a vintage neck nowhere. And after years of searching, I found one in Melbourne. Sydney, uh, Melbourne, Australia. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but it's a 62 neck. So mm. now... The 59 body has a 62 neck, but for me it works. And hey, there's famous players like Eric Clapton with, you know, the, his Blackie yeah. is also a parts caster. Right. I mean, of course, vintage parts, but if you combine great stuff, you get great guitars. And, okay, the collectors are different animal. Right. You know, yeah. they want all original and they want, you know, you know whatever, uh, great condition. The player like you and myself... For us, it's the tone, it's the instrument. Right. And um, I even feel sometimes worse playing a guitar that is too clean, too original, because what happens is you bump into your bass player or somebody knocks your guitar over. So my strat is he heavy relic by my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So, you yeah. know, because stuff simply happens. Yeah. And, and there, therefore, you know, I don't have to get angry or mad at my colleagues when shit happens, you know, unless they do super stupid stuff. So far, nobody used the car to drive over it. Right. <laughs> but Which happens. I have seen everything yeah. in, in the guitar world, yes. But, but cool. So about the guitar that you have here, this is kind of the holy grail. Right. This is why you picked it. Well, um, to be honest, I, I picked that one first, but I... Uh, thought well then we tried something else so i thought okay i'll just move on over <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's a sweet guitar i like it yeah. Yeah. Ah, talking about you know such a nice guitar. Just one little uh, question about the amp. You are using the Space Echo, the, the Roland, right? Uh, the two o one. There's a three o one. Is there any difference for you? Well, the three o one has a chorus in it. Do you uh, need that? No. Okay. But, it's but too sometimes, modern. sometimes the uh, the echo sound. I mean, you have purists there as well that say like, ah, it's a different echo sound than the two o one. I use both actually. Okay. I have a 301 and a 201, and uh, I think Setzer uses the 301 okay. these days basically. And uh, well, but it's, I mean, you want to have the tape compression. I mean, that's yeah, the yeah. main thing, really. Yeah. I mean, so that's, and, and that the, makes the rockabilly sound to me. And the, there's a reverb built in as well, right? Yeah, right. And this is not, I, I don't see much reverb here. No, actually, I mean, with, I usually. When I use my amp, yeah. I use the Fender Spring Reverb. Okay, so yeah. I don't well, use. What the is your amp? This is a Fender Bassman, by the way. Yeah, that we are I using. have a I have a Bandmaster, Bandmaster? Fender Bandmaster, yeah. and I have the Spring Echo Box. Ah, okay, yeah. the separate the, Spring. Right. Because it does like this one, it doesn't have any. Yeah, 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 yeah. But on the road, because this is kind of sometimes if you smell uh, play some club dates, you don't want to bring the box, the top, yeah, the Spring Reverb, the Echo. So I use a uh, Vibrolux Reverb. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
just to make double sure, the chorus is never needed for the kind of music, rockabilly. They didn't know anything about chorus back in the day. Because, you know, Only if two guitarists were playing together and they yeah. weren't properly tuned. Yeah. <laughs> right. This, this right. Good. Because the chorus was invented only in the 80s. Right. And this is Roland, um, and there, there was the Roland Jazz Chorus mm -hmm. uh, amplifier for the roads or whatever they, they build it for. And the, and transistor amp and the, the chorus was a, an effect of the 80s it has nothing to do with music from before that period right. 50s 60s uh, you know uh, so it's funny that of course they, they, they had a space echo out and they put all, kind of all their hot inventions in into it and um, but I think the, the funny thing about the space echo is it's still a tape delay. It's real right. old tape. Yep. And in those days, they started to use different technologies to create delay. Uh, this was the, the like in 80s, when, when, when was the, the, the space yeah, echo? Yeah, I think, uh, or middle of the 70s, something yeah, like yeah. that. And I think because, I mean, among rockabilly guitarists, why this became so famous is because all the other tape echoes, they would break down. Ah, okay. So and, and this one is Japanese really, quality, right? I mean, this, I mean, I have this on on tour with me, and <clears throat> I've been on tour with this Echo for fifteen years now, and I never once had any problems. Yeah. Did you check out the new replica pedal digital version? I have one. Any because good? Because sometimes when I have to fly, and there's Small. like, and and they they. They, you know, at the other end where the gig is, they, they say, okay, well, we can get you a Fender and everything. I don't, I tried them. I said, well, I need a Roland Space Echo. And they mm. say, well, we can get one. And, and sometimes they get one and it's pretty in bad shape. Let's put it that way. So I, 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 I have one of these just as a backup and I use it. It's okay. It's cool and it does the job. But yeah. I mean, in the studio, if you want to, if you want to, you know, the extra right. mile, the the real deal is, the, the, is the good old yeah. stuff. So, yeah. and for you, it doesn't matter the two or one or three or one or what is your favorite? Not really. Actually, it's I think it's with the it's the same as with a guitar. I mean, yeah. you, if you say like you have four struts from, yeah, of course, you, you yeah. couldn't say it has to be the fifty six yeah. or the yeah. fifty seven. Yeah. You know, so, and th with these echo boxes, it's the same thing. You have, I have one where I think when I plug it in, it's like, yeah, That's I like one. what yeah. I hear. And the other one says, well, it's okay, but the other one is just that inch more of, you know, right, more in your face or whatever you want to call it. You know. Cool. So we had the amp. Um, you play this guitar, please. So we hear the difference of the maestro <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, d different guitar. Yeah, let's swap guitars and, and listen to different instruments. Just All right. I, of course, yeah. Well, we were talking about Eddie Cochran, right? So, I mean, 20 flight rock. Ooh, well, I got a girl with a racket machine. When it comes to rock and she's a queen. We go to dance on a Saturday night. I'm all alone and I hold her tight. But she lives on the 20th floor of town. The elevator's broken down, so walk one, two, five, three, flight four, five, six, seven, flight eight, flight more. One, on twelve, I'm a starting the sack. I said fifteen, the floor, I'm ready to drag. I get to the top, well I'm too tired to rock. Never played that song, but yeah. it, it, it is a nice. Uh... Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, what wh what is this guitar telling you as an instrument? Is there anything that you specifically like? It's kind of snappy, or well, I like the way it it, it handles, it feels. Yeah, I must say. I mean, I just had it for for a minute now. Yeah. I'm, not... I'm impressed about this guitar. It sounds big, but yeah. it still has the transparency. So I think this right. is a good guitar. Yeah. I, 
just in, without knowing any details in scratch guitars, yeah. to me that guitar tells me quality instrument. Right. Okay, just my little... Yeah, I, don't, I agree. Okay. And you played lots of them. Hey, let's let's check some more. Is is there what what else is on the on the bench here? Maybe this one here. So okay. <clears throat> was this the one that uh, was used for Peter Gunn or for? I think this one was Eddie. the that was the Eddie Cochran guitar. Ah. <laughs> ah. Huh? Maybe broken. No, no, it's just. Uh, let me turn up the. Ah, wait a minute. Different pickups. Ah, no. No filtertron pickups. Filtertron. Okay. Okay. Now I see. Okay. This is a different animal. Okay. Than these, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know? Okay. At the beginning, I was kind of shocked and thought, "Where's is something broken?" But it's single coils. Yeah, snappy. I mean, but if I w if I were to use something, you know, like like a twenty thing, I I could imagine using this guitar. Like. Okay, let's check the next one here. So we have, what is this baby here? I, okay, but I, I can hold this. I think this is 57, something like that. Somebody has a, some information here. I, I yeah. do yeah. read this. Gretsch 6120, Chet Atkins from 57. Yeah, this is funny. There is the hump block inlays. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of this? I, th this is the first time I've ever uh, hump block yeah. inlays. Well, actually, I think with the, uh, oh no, with the Rancher, with the acoustic guitar, I think they had some uh, cactus and cowboy inlay. I think they were cowboy inla called cowboy inlays or something like okay. this. Because they were all these Western motifs that they used. Right. And uh, also they have this, Oh yeah, the other guitars at the, uh, the yeah. 56, they have this G brand thing, you know, like on a cow where yeah. you would yeah, yeah. make sure <laughs> it, it's my cow. Rebel Rouser, Peter Gunn. Uh, yeah. yeah.
Oh, plus five. Yeah. Okay, I never play that song, but it's... It, this song is a, such a classic. Sleepwalk, Santo and Johnny. I think that would have been good for this, because I think it came out in 59. But, uh, yeah. Hey, why don't you play that on this guitar, on the 59? <laughs> just, just, no, just... actually, you get the 59. Oh, this okay, is no, the 58. No, I, I, hey, you, you have to play this on the proper guitar. <laughs> no, 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 no. We just, we just did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I want to hear the, okay. the, the tone. The tone. <sighs> Yeah, it's a little bit too yeah. hot. Yeah. Then, ah, then I get the shrub. Ah. Cool, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. For me, that makes sense. And it's the, exactly what you have in, in your head when you hear that song. It, it's that tone. Right. Did we have another guitar? Yeah, we, 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 we didn't one play. more. One more. Yeah, it's, it's a silent plug, yeah. It should be. <laughs> we got the... Uh... Cool. This one, I like this one. So this is yeah. what is it? I think it's from 60, 1960. Ah, 1960. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it is a maple top. Yeah. It looks kind of yeah. uh, almost like bird's eye maple yeah. in a way. It has a nice uh, texture. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, f well, is there anything else we have to know song-wise or... <laughs> song-wise? <laughs> yeah. Ah, I see one thing which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. This has a standard nut here yeah. and this they has a the zero, the zero, zero fret. fret. Yeah. So... I think it started in 15, well, 59 for sure. I thought it started in 58. Maybe this one, that like it changed somewhere down that year. I don't know. And but, uh, any advantage of this or that? Uh, well, tuning-wise, I don't know. Actually, to be honest, either it's out of tune or it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but there's, I, I'm sure there's a lot of opinions out there that yeah. people say. But for me, the good thing is you are a player 
and as long as it works, you don't care. Well, my actually my fifty nine has a zero fret. Okay, I know, I know that and other guitars, yeah, and it works. And okay. other guitars, they get rid of it, uh -huh. you know. So, um, you know, for, well, whatever floats your boat, right? See, yeah, so. I'm totally with you. Yeah. Hey, hey, guys, I think uh, we talked a lot um, in this episode here. Let's play whatever, something at the outro, and uh, we call it a day on this one. All right. Uh, key, what, you start. We change the key, maybe with something in minor, because we all okay, played a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, whatever. Let's get sad at the end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs>